Praise God and welcome to today's devotion. Let's pray together. Almighty God, we honor you, we praise you, we worship you for gathering us to listen to this. Lord, use me as your vessel of honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So today we continue with um, the theme on judgment and uh, repentance and reward but mainly judgment because that's what Paul is talking about in Romans chapter 2. And uh, today we want, we want to look at um, what Jesus says about that, uh, about the same topic. And uh, we will be looking at Matthew chapter 11, verse 20 to 24. Matthew chapter 11 verse 20 to 24, and the topic is those who do not repent. So verse 20 says this, then he began to rebuke the cities in which most of his mighty works had been done because they did not repent. So here in this verse, Jesus is uh, addressing the people who had gathered around him to listen to him. And so he begins by rebuking uh, the cities that uh, had not repented. And uh, we will be looking shortly at what, which of these cities, which are these cities. So notice Jesus denounces them, not because they had sinned, but because they did not repent. So the, the thing that makes Jesus uh, to denounce this city or cities was because they did not repent. So here the message that Jesus is talking about, the main point is about uh, judgment. So uh, the other thing I want you to notice here is um, about maybe I can read verse 21 and then I will tell us what I wanted to say. So verse 21 says, what to you, Chorazin? What to you, Beth Bethsaida? For if the mighty works which have been done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long, uh, long ago, long time ago. So here, Jesus is, uh, is uh, denouncing uh, Chorazin and Bethsaida. And the reason he's denouncing them is because Jesus did many miracles in those cities. Jesus did lots of teaching uh, to his people in those cities. Those were main, some of the main areas where Jesus did his ministry. And unfortunately, they did not repent. Uh, and so he's uh, denouncing them and, and comparing them to Tyre and Sidon. So Tyre and Sidon were, um, they were, they were, they were Old Testament cities. So notice Jesus is particularly uh, uh, singles out the cities in which most of the miracles had been performed: Chorazin, Bethsaida, and Capernaum. This. These cities had, had had an opportunity to hear the word of God. Tyre and Sidon were, were, were cities in the Old Testament. Then they didn't have an opportunity to hear the gospel. And so that's why Jesus is telling, um, is telling Chorazin and Bethsaida that they, that, uh, they will, uh, that, that war to, Bethsa, to Chorazin, war to Bethsaida for mighty works which were done in you have been done in Tyre. And, oh, sorry, let me read that again. What to you, Chorazin? What to you, Bethsaida? For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented. So Paul, I mean, Jesus is telling uh, Bethsaida and Chorazin that if those other cities which were destroyed, if they had had an opportunity to hear the gospel, uh, for them, they would have repented. But let's look at... Um, so what Jesus is doing? So here, Jesus is mourning uh, for those cities 
which had an opportunity to experience his miracles and they didn't repent. Those cities which had an opportunity to meet him as, as Jesus, as a Messiah, and they didn't receive him. Those people uh, who had an opportunity to listen to him and to ask him questions, and yet they didn't pay attention. They were not interested. And this message is coming to each and every person who is under the sound of my voice, but also who have had an opportunity opportunity to be members of churches, many who have, who own Bibles, many who come from families where, where, where there has been generations of uh, Christianity, many who know the Lord, many whose baptismal names are biblical names, they are Christians' names, and yet they are, they are they have never accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Jesus is mourning for such people. And why is he mourning? Because of the judgment day. Because judgment is awaiting those kind of people. So when you look at Ezekiel, one of the things that we need to know even as we listen to this is that God takes no pleasure in the in the death of a wicked person. So when you read Ezekiel, uh, Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 11, it says, As surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that they, that they turn from their ways and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways. Why will you die, O house of Israel? So God does not take pleasure when... Um, a wicked person perishes. His desire is that all of us will surrender to him and allow him to be our Lord and Savior. So God's kindness should lead us to, um, to repentance. And that is what we have been learning this week in the uh, book of Romans. So in verse, when you look at Romans chapter 2, verse 4, and Romans chapter 2, verse um, uh, verse 12, you will, you will realize that, uh, you know, God does not, God takes no pleasure in the death of a wicked. And God's kindness should not lead you, should lead us uh, to, to repentance. God, God's kindness should lead us. Uh, to repentance. God's desire is that we will surrender fully to him and allow him um, to, to lead us and to guide us and to be our Lord and Savior. So, so Jesus looks sincerely at, uh, at, at those cities which had an opportunity to love him, cities where Jesus based his ministries at. He looks at them and he pities them, he mourns for them because they refused to accept, to accept him as their Lord and Savior. So Psalms, verse, Psalms 38 verse 18 uh, says, when we repent, we should expre express true sorrow for our sin. Uh, because um, in Psalms 38, Psalms 38 verse 18 says, I confess my iniquity, I am troubled by my sin. So when we repent, we should express our sorrow. So uh, verse 22 to 24, uh, says, but if I say to you, it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon in the day of judgment than you. And you, Capernaum, who are exalted in heaven, will be brought down to the heads. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But, uh, but I say to you, that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for you. So remember, Jesus is addressing three cities, and that is, uh, uh, that, that is, that is um, uh, Chorazin. He's addressing um, uh, Capernaum. He's addressing Bethsaida, Bethsaida because he did miracles there, because he best, that was like his headquarters. You know, it was the place where he interacted and taught his word. And unfortunately, people there did not change. They didn't allow the gospel to transform them. So here Jesus is, is comparing those uh, three cities with Old Testament cities 
two old, old Testament cities, and that is Tyre and Sidon, and also the third one, Sodom. And he says that those that Tyre, Sodom, and Gomorrah, if uh, and uh, and uh, Tyre and Sidon and Sodom, if they had an opportunity to hear the gospel, they would have repented. They got destroyed simply. Uh, they they got destroyed. They didn't have an opportunity to hear the gospel. But if they had an opportunity, they would have changed. And so, uh, Jesus wants is warning us of the coming punishment. For those who do not repent, the Lord is calling us to a place of uh, repentance, a place of allowing him to transform us. This year's uh, theme in Cathedral is that we sh that be ye transformed. So the Lord is calling us to a place of allowing the gospel to transform us. We should not allow us to be in the record, in the book of uh, the people who will be judged harshly, and yet we had an opportunity to hear the gospel. So be you transformed. May the Lord change us. Dear Father, as we gather before you, we pray that you bring us to repentance. We pray that you cause us to change our ways and to allow the gospel to transform us. Break us, everlasting God, and mold each and every one of us that we may be the people you desire us to be. Lord, we commit every person who is under the vow sound of my voice to you. Lord, minister to each and every one of them. Cause them to surrender fully to you and attend to their needs. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and scatter every darkness from before your path. And the blessings of God, Almighty Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.